Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Demonology Today with Grizzly and Dennis Carroll. Dennis, how are you today? All right, sir. How's everything? Wonderful. Reality is not what we seem to be and what not we are living in, so I know that. <laughs> it's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I said what I said to somebody the other day, Chris, that, you know, uh, I think the forces, the powers that be, Want to keep us off guard, want us to question our own reality and not really know what's really going on. Uh, and they're doing a darn good job at it. Yes, uh, I have watched some videos that I sent Mr. Carroll. Hello, Nighthawk. Hello, Crazy Witch. Tess, hello, everybody. Nighthawk. Welcome. Yeah. I say a Sue. Yes, welcome to another edition. Reality. Really? Yes, reality. It's funny that you got a black rabbit. But yeah, so where we left rabbit off old. last week is very interesting and very dark, uh, I will say. I don't think a lot of well, people uh, actually believed in what we uh, had to say, but that's fine. Uh, well, I knew we were going to kind of, we're going to do that again tonight. We're going to step on some more toes, I guess, but... Uh, that happens. That happens when you get on this subject. But uh, we've been doing a three-part thing here, and uh, you know, this is the last, the three-part. This is to close out our little thing here, and it is uh, the end game. It's in your future. Now, next week we're going to plan on having an open mic and taking questions. I think, aren't we? And uh, yes, that is correct. Stuff like that. I so even, that should be. I I even had my uh, phone line uh, set up to take uh, phone calls. So we got a studio phone call. We got links to send out. But, you know, uh, during one of my shows, uh, I wanted to present something. And Uh uh, I wanted to uh, show this real quick before we got started because people do not believe in things. And when people do not believe in things, it's amazing what people do not understand because what I say when they are being brainwashed, I say they're being brainwashed. So with that being said, I'm just going to bl- bring up this little clip right here. And, uh, and I'm just going to play this little clip just, just for a moment here. I've got some interesting footage out in, in Bigfoot land. But I just got off another show here. Let me see if I can find this. Let's see. It's not that one. That's the one I sent you. Uh, it's not that one. Uh, now, watch. I cannot find it. Uh, maybe it's uh, motivation. No, it's not that one. Uh, Fallen angel. No, maybe it's no, maybe it's not that one. Hold up. 
Now I'm going to go to here. Let me let me stop sharing here. I'll, I'll let you talk while I find it. There we go. How's that? Let me see if I can find right. it while while you talk. Okay. Well, uh, the end game. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight, and it's going to concern you. So you need to listen real close tonight, because this is your future that we're going to be talking about. It's coming up, and it's coming up faster than I ever would have thought possible. But uh, there are certain elements in our in our world, not just this country, but we're talking about the whole world, that want to see things go a whole lot differently than we really suspect. And you now have this woke culture culture going on, you know this, uh, and it, and it's intimidation in many parts, in many ways. Uh, they intimidate people to get to their point of view, and uh, they don't. I found see... the I found the video. Oh, okay, sir. okay, here we go. go ahead. Here we go. Yeah. Go ahead. And this, go ahead. this, this is kind of mineral melt in your mouth to rebuild your gums and teeth, and never need a dentist again. People are fit. Right. Not human. Get it? Something unhuman, but intelligent. A non-terrestrial intelligence. Do you believe in aliens? Extraterrestrial beings? For those of us who read the Bible, it's clear. Extraterrestrial beings not only exist, but they've been here since the very beginning, since before the Earth was made. Quote, Where were you when I laid the foundations of the Earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched out the line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone when all the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? End quote. What this verse is saying is that when the earth was created, there was a race of beings called morning stars or sons of God who sang together and shouted for joy after God created it. Quote, we may deduce two logical conclusions from these verses. First, that they are not referring to literal stars but the sentient sons of God. And second, that these sons of God are older than the earth itself, since they were present to witness the primordial foundation. The motif of the morning stars in biblical parallels is meant to convey pre-existence and preeminence. In John's revelation, Jesus declares, quote, I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. While writing to the brethren in Colossae, Paul affirms the preeminence of Christ, quote, he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. As the firstborn, not only from the dead, but over all creation, Jesus is the original morning star and the preeminent son of God. The morning stars and sons of God are children of dawn, the second born in the family of God. They represent an elder race of beings that are both preexistent and preeminent, in relationship to all others, save the Son of God himself, the first and foremost over all creation, end quote. An elder race of beings, otherwise known as angels. They were there to witness God creating the earth, and by their very definition, they're extraterrestrials. Now, we know that angels can look like people. There are instances all throughout the Bible that prove this point. The most famous one being in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2. Quote, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. So angels can look like humans, act like humans, sound like humans, and pretend to be humans. But deep down, they are far from human. Let's not forget that Lucifer himself is an angel. What? Lucifer is an angel, a fallen angel. December 8th, 2020. The Jerusalem Post releases an article entitled, quote, Former Israeli space security chief says aliens exist. Humanity is not ready. Let's read it together and see what we can find. Every time this article says the word alien, I'm going to replace it with fallen angel because that's exactly what they are. Quote, this galactic federation has supposedly been in contact with Israel and the U.S. for years, but are keeping themselves a secret to prevent hysteria until humanity is ready. This article is by Aaron Reich, December 8th, 2020. Has the state of Israel made contact with fallen angels? According to retired Israeli general and current professor, Hayam Ashid, the answer is yes. 
but this has been kept a secret because, quote, humanity isn't ready. Speaking in an interview, Ashed, who served as head of Israeli's space security program for nearly 30 years and is a three-time recipient of the Israeli Security Award, explained that Israel and the U.S. have both been dealing with fallen angels for years, with Ashed clarifying the existence of a, quote, galactic federation. The galactic federation. Hmm. In New Age theology, there is a group of so-called, quote, good aliens who call themselves the Galactic Federation of Light, or the Ashtar Command. They've been making contact with psychics and channelers for decades now, and their message is always the same. It's in direct opposition to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, it's the same exact lie Lucifer told Eve in the Garden of Eden. It's their calling card, and they always resort back to this promise of, ye shall be as gods. The angels, the sons of God, resemble who we call in ufology the Nordics or the Pleiadians, who are these beings who very much look like us. The misconception is that the fallen angels have a different appearance than the good angels. The bad guys look different than the good guys. The, the good guys are these beautiful angelic beings, and the fallen angels are these grotesque, demonic-looking entities with horns, and they're, they're, they're the typical Hollywood depictions of demons. But that's ludicrous. That is completely illogical. These entities, these beings, hail from the same race. Every time that human beings encounter angelic beings within the biblical narrative, the description of the angels is always the same. They look like men. Indeed, Paul says that it's possible to entertain angels unawares, which means that you can confuse them for human beings. They're not human beings. They are, in fact, an extraterrestrial non-human race, a pre-existent extraterrestrial non-human race. But they are also sons of God, just like Adam was a son of God. And so it makes sense, therefore, that all the sons in the family bear the same semblance. They look the same and they resemble their father. And it is my contention that both mankind and the elder race, the human race and the elder race, bear the image of God. There is no scripture in the Bible anywhere that states that mankind is the exclusive bearer of God's image. Rather, it just says that we were made in the image and likeness of the empty. And so we look like them because they are our elder siblings. We are, we are reproductively compatible with them. So we are very similar, even physiologically, although they are of a higher nature. And so then the question is, what do they look like? And I think the answer is apparent within the canonized text of scripture. They look like us, but with some differences. And we know that there has to be some differences because Lot was able to recognize them when they were approaching the city of, of Sodom. Lot saw two angels approaching and, and instantly was able to recognize that these were sons of God, emissaries from the kingdom of heaven. Now, how could he have recognized these angels? Because they looked human enough to where they could pass through town and be taken as exotic human beings, but they had distinctive trademarks, hallmarks, that were calling cards that they were not human beings and that they were indeed angels. This was something that we heard about and then we investigated during research for the book Exo Vaticana, which ultimately led us to the top of Mount Graham in Arizona. Uh, we, you know, we were curious why. Uh, when the Vatican's advanced technology telescope and the large binocular telescope were being built, why did the indigenous peoples of Arizona, especially the San Carlos Apaches, why did they join environmentalists in filing dozens of lawsuits before a federal appeals court to try to stop the construction of the observations on uh, Mount Graham? Um, the project 
ultimately prevailed in favor of the Vatican and NASA after an act by the United States Congress ordered it to be done. But the question remained in our mind, why had the tribal communities fought so diligently against the construction of telescopes atop that mountain? Now, I had wrongly assumed that this was because Mount Graham was a sacred place, as in preceding generations of Native Americans had lived and died on it, and therefore it was considered holy ground, something like a graveyard. Um, but I learned later that while that was partially true, it really wasn't the big issue. The real dispute surrounded how Mount Graham is considered one of the four holiest mountains in the world for the Apache and is considered sacred to all of the region's native peoples. And it is so because it is what we might call a stargate um, in their mythos, a portal through which the star people have come since the dawn of time. And once we understood that fact, our suspicions as to why the Vatican and NASA had chosen that mountain in particular, uh, even being willing to face a prolonged legal battle to build these telescopes on Mount uh, Graham, including the largest binocular telescope in the world where the Lucifer device is kept, uh, why would they have gone to all of that trouble. Why not just go to another mountain range and find basically the same height, the same environmental conditions? Why did it have to be that mountain? Um, now we came to learn another thing, and that is that the San Carlos Apache um, have these preserved ancient tales concerning Mount Graham and that geography, including stories very similar to biblical chronology. Um, these legends involve a creator, uh, a deceiving dragon that follows, an epic flood, and even a race of giants known as the Jindupids who were judged and destroyed by God. According to the legend, a race of Indians called the Tartums lived in the valley uh, um, between Tucson and Phoenix. These were just peaceful farmers and they prospered until one day they were invaded by the Jindupids, described as Goliaths, who were so huge they used tree limbs for toothpicks. Well, these Nephilim <clears throat> were led by this massive man they call Evilkin, um, who allegedly came from the northeast and were headed south to their home beyond the Gulf of Baja. Um, these giants nearly wiped out the Tartums before they ran and hid themselves underground and in the mountains and prayed to Father Son, who then threw this huge fireball that came down to the air, seared the monstrous Nephilim into the scorched uh, mountain rock and wiped them out. Now, elements of that tale uh, are obviously mythological, but it has a remarkable thematic coherence with Genesis chapter 6. Um, the Apache creation myth is also interesting in this regard, um, as a particular version involves what they call the one who lives above, who descended down over the mountain in a flying disc uh, at the start of creation. Their, their myth begins, in the beginning, nothing existed, no earth, no sky, no sun, no moon, only darkness was everywhere. Um, and then the legend starts before noting that suddenly from the darkness uh, emerged a disc. One side of it was yellow, the other side of it was white. Uh, it appeared suspended in midair. And within the disc sat a bearded man, the creator, the one who lives above. Um, now, besides this creator who rides in a heavenly disc, there's a dragon with the power of speech that turns up, bargaining with mankind, as well as supernatural gateways associated with mountains through which spirit beings have and can come. So suffice it to say that these ancient native ideas involving flying disks, flying creators, spirit guides, even owls and a talking dragon or a great serpent, uh, and supernatural gateways tied to mountain ranges. Um, this is something that began long before the Vatican cast its eyes on Mount Graham. 
Think how much these legends mirror what the Bible teaches, including the idea that mountaintops or high towers uh, were often depicted as places where doorways into the supernatural could be opened. For instance, Nimrod of biblical fame sets out to build a tower whose top will reach into heaven, Genesis 11, 4 says. This was the infamous Tower of Babel, and uh, Nimrod was designing it so that the top of it would extend into Shamayim, heaven, the dwelling place of God. Um, the Jewish Encyclopedia confirms several historical records that Nimrod, who it establishes, was also identified by various ancient cultures as Osiris, Orion, Apollo, Gilgamesh, that he had built the Tower of Babel specifically to ascend into the presence of God, into the presence of Jehovah himself. And, of course, God came down and said of the tower's design, that nothing would be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do, Genesis 11, 6. So in other words, according to the Lord himself, Nimrod would have accomplished what he imagined to do, and that is to build a tower whose top would reach into the abode of God. Uh, even the name Babylon implies that, echoing the North and South American Indian beliefs about towering gateways and the meaning gate of God or gateway to God. Now, that there could be sacred locations where those beings that can see into the supernatural realm could literally walk um, onto a high place and enter heaven is really not as far-fetched as it's found. There are numerous records, including in the Bible, that appear to substantiate the idea that heaven can be attained on high towers or mountainous locations. So think about Moses meeting with God on Sinai, um, Jesus returning atop the Mount of Olives, the 200 watchers that descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon, and other examples, including Jacob's Ladder. Okay, well, Admiral Bird has a nephew named Harvey Bird. Harvey Bird did the foreword for the book Stranger at the Pentagon, who happens to be about an alien name called Valiant Thor who came to Earth. From 1957, there was a spacecraft that landed not too far from the Pentagon, about 14 miles away. Uh, police showed up at the scene. There was a man standing there, and basically they escorted him over to the Pentagon. This man, or this, this entity, I should say, had, was here for about three years living at the Pentagon and working with the U.S. government. His name was Valiant Thor. Now, this is where it gets weird because Bill Snyder's dad worked alongside Valiant Thor. And not only did he work with him, he also worked in a lot of the, the UFO stuff as well as exotic space materials. Now, after his dad passed away, this stuff was found in his uh, father's attic or whatever, and he was going through it and with a couple of his friends, and they started looking at this. But Phil Snyder had already had his encounter because he worked as a geologist at the location that you were talking about, which is the Dulce location. And through me talking with Greg Renrich, that designation for the Dulce location is called S-20. So just like... Area 51 has S4. They all have different designations, but the one at Dulce is designated as S20. And while he was there, they were basically tunneling, building a, an area for an underground military base, and they actually punched through something. Now, what Bill Snyder used to say, or what he claimed, was that they knew these entities were already there. That's one of the things that aggravated and irritated him the most, was that he, the government knew they were there. And they allowed them to go work that, that in such close proximity. So when they broke through and they went down to see what was wrong with the, 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 the machine that was tunneling, when they got down there, they encountered these 12-foot-tall graves. And Bill said as soon as they saw them, they, pulled, they unholstered the weapons and they began firing. And he said that one of the entities literally threw his hand up in front of his chest like this. And he said all I saw was a blue beam. Next thing I know, I was laying on the ground, it burned his feet, had a big scar on his chest where it basically opened him up like a fish and took some of his fingers off. 
that was his encounter at the Dulce location. But like I said, you know, he, his father and him are both tied into this. So you got all this information that his father left behind when he passed away. And Bill and his friends are going through this information. Well, one of his friends, uh, I believe his name was Ron White, was an author. And he basically was going through all of this information and was writing about it. And he might have even reached out to a few people. I don't know. But not too long after that, he supposedly went out to the woods and killed himself. And after that happened, Phil Snyder became very vocal at that point. You know, he said, I do, not, I do not believe that my friend killed himself. I believe that he was murdered. And then he started going out onto circuits and was talking about this openly, what he had seen, what he was witness to. He even talked about Valiant Thor very openly. And, you know, that was the thing is that while he was doing this, there was 13 attempts on his life. The 14th was successful. They finally killed him. They silenced him and shut him up. Uh, one of them did this. I rem all I remember is that he just kind of waved his hand in front of his chest. And the next thing I know, this blue beam hit me and just literally opened me up like a fish. And every uh, burnt, burnt, burnt my fingers right off of me. And it was some form of electrical force because the kind of like hit, being hit by a lightning bolt burned all my toenails off of me. Uh, completely crispy critter in my left foot. Uh, Thor, like I said, he lived at the Pentagon for about three years. But, the, I mean, the story even gets really bizarre with him. Like I said, um, uh, I believe it was uh, Stranges was the gentleman's name who actually met Valiant Thor several times and talked to him and interviewed him. But the uh, bizarre thing about Valiant Thor was he had no fingerprints whatsoever. So that led a lot of them to believe that he was a created being, possibly even an angel. That's what they referred to him as, was the angel at the Pentagon. And in fact, there's a black and white photograph of his father sitting in the briefing room at the Pentagon with Valiant Thor and several other well-known people. I mean, we know that disclosure happened in 2017. That's, that's a given. That's when Fox News and everybody, I believe it's Tucker, Carl, Tucker Carlson at Fox News, wrote the whole story about the Navy UFOs and all that. Okay, so that, that was disclosure. That's when that happened. But then it came out of about this $22.5 million that the Pentagon was looking into the UFO thing. Okay? I understand that. But that's not where the money went. The money was actually spent at Skinwalker Ranch because there was two different programs. There was ATIP and there was OSAP. OSAP is where the everything going on at Skinwalker Ranch, where they're researching all these entities and weird, bizarre stuff happening, uh, portals. Um, in fact, uh, one of the, uh, the same gentleman that we were talking about a while ago, the Carl Marx that was on uh, Black Vault, he actually said that um, these lights would just appear out of nowhere. And he said they were blinding. So they would take their hands and put them up over their eyes. With their eyes shut and their hands kept over, they could still see the light. It was still blinding. And they could actually see the bones in their fingers. Back to what I was saying about the OSAP, that was, uh, that was the umbrella that was over Skinwalker Ranch. And that's where the $22.5 million went. So it was spent investigating out at Skinwalker Ranch. It was not spent on the military looking for UFOs out there. That's one thing is they are actually starting to talk about a lot of this stuff. Like you got the Nimitz incident that happened with the Tic Tac and uh, Forever, the pilot who was a top gun pilot, worked there, was in the Navy for 20 plus years. Um, and that's the thing, that's another one that they don't really tell the whole story. You'll hear him talk about this Tic Tac and how it was doing these maneuvers and different things. But what one part that you will never hear all the other outlets talking about, which you can go and find the, Jer the Jeremy Corbell interview with him and George Knapp sitting on a stage. It's broken into two parts. Each part's one hour. He tells the whole incident from beginning to end. And the Tic Tac was just the scratching the surface. That was just the beginning. Was there more of them? Or? There was a fleet of them. A fleet? Yes, and you actually hear them talking about that on one of the clips. You can hear them say, there's a whole fleet out there. Well, what he's talking about and what he goes into detail in that, that interview, 
these things were up in upper orbits. They dropped from 80,000 feet to 20,000 feet in a matter of seconds. We're talking about two or three seconds. He said they swarmed them and that they were literally, they had to boogie and get out of there. Then you got the incident over on the eastern coast where they were talking about that uh, they were out on a squadron. There was a squadron on this. I believe there was about five of them. And they're out doing maneuvers over the ocean. And they said that all of a sudden they saw what looked like a cube, but it was cloaked. We're talking, you know, like the movie Predator. It looked like it was cloaked. So they see this this cube flying through the sky, but it looks like it has a round circle around it. And it looks like it's cloaked. And when they got close to it, they said this thing literally broke through their their squadron. It flew between two planes, and they had to veer off like this. I would say that they're letting the military know that you don't have free range over here. We can basically do whatever we please. They were scared back in World War II. Um, you know, when the pilots were encountering foo what they called Foo Fighters. You know, they couldn't match the velocity, they couldn't keep up with the speeds, and these things were just running circles around them. And so, I mean, you can you can even go back and read about the Foo Fighters. And like I said, you know, you, it wasn't just American pilots, it was British pilots, all, all sorts of different pilots that were playing and talking about this very openly, and they were like, you know, we couldn't match them. And I don't know what they were, but, we, you know, we were afraid. The American public has no clue what is going on, and like I said, when they finally, when this some of this stuff starts coming to light, uh, I totally believe that this is going to tie in. That men's hearts are going to be going with for fear for the things that they're going to be looking upon that are coming on the earth. I believe if we're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, that we have no, there is no fear. And like I said, I mean, that's the one thing that we can do is rebuke anything in the name of Jesus. In fact, Greg Renrich, that was one of the things. That he told me, uh, he's the one that was uh, talking about seeing the, the giants in the deep underground military bases. He said that one of the first things that they had to do before he was allowed to go into S4 or S20 or any of the others, they made him sign an affidavit saying, you're not allowed to use the name Jesus Christ in these underground facilities, not even if you stub your toe or anything. And he said that he saw 10 to 25 foot tall giants in these underground bases and said that they were, you know, the human scientists and other people working side by side with them. He said that they even came right out and said they were the Nephilim. They, they came right out and said it, said that, uh, you know, basically we're preparing for an intergalactic war with God and they believe that they're going to win. Where are they getting this? They're going to win from. Uh, <laughs> and why are you not allowed to say the name Jesus yeah, in these exactly, underground right? facilities? And then you also got uh, Joe Jordan, um, actually interviewed him probably uh, about a year and a half ago, did an interview with him. And at that point, he still works at MUFI, he's still doing the CE4 research. But he said that he's almost, up to, he's already up to 600 and something plus cases that he's uncovered in MUFI, where people that were being abducted or having encounters, whenever they cried out in the name of Jesus, not only did they stop, but if they accepted Jesus as their savior, they stopped permanently. In fact, we actually encountered this when we were out shooting Hollow Earth. We went out to uh, the uh, White Earth, Minnesota, and while we were there talking with them, we, they actually took us out to eat before we went to go start work. So we stopped at this restaurant. We were sitting there eating, and basically Riverwind was alluding to the, the skinwalkers. He never came right out and said it, but I knew that's what he was talking about. So I said, oh, you're talking about the skinwalkers? And I mean, immediately, everybody in the whole establishment just stopped talking. And it just got quiet. And they immediately began to pray and started rebuking what I just said in Jesus' name. And apparently on the reservation, you're not supposed to use the name Skinwalker or anything like that because it invokes them and they will come seek you out. What do you think about well, that, sir? Brought up, uh, brought up some interesting points there. I do uh, disagree with a few things they said, but it did bring up some interesting points. Uh, the thing about, of course, um, the uh, celestial beings, the angels, 
uh, can look like men when they want to, definitely, and then many times they are required to do so. But the description of the Bible makes these things out to be completely unhuman looking things. Uh, there's a description of them having feathers and wings and, and a lot of eyes and four faces and all this stuff. So you're dealing with beings that are not human because angels are a different race altogether. Although they may have been created in the image of God, I agree with that. Uh, I believe that uh, some of them, so like the Sephirim and some of the other classes of angels, don't do that. They don't look that. These classes are created for different purposes and different servitude of God. I think common angels, the regular, I call them the regular guys, uh, and I think that's what we're referring to in, in, in that the morning stars, that's always been a name for angels, um, are uh, more more human looking probably than some of the other celestial beings. But, you know, I got a motto, uh, Chris, and this is what it is, okay? Realize, realize, realize. When you get that? And realize. Yeah. Realize, realize, and we've got to remember something, okay? Listening to all of this, one thing strikes me more than anything else is the downright smell, the demonic smoke, the smell of, of brimstone and a lot of this stuff. You know, just like he said about them invoking the name of Jesus and these things would stop. Well, that tells you something right there, that what you're dealing with is not human or, or, or anything close to human. It is inhuman. And also, one more thing I'll say about the UFOs. If they can do the maneuvers they say, then according to our laws of physics in this universe, nothing flesh and blood could live on a, on a ship like that, okay? If these were really ships like that, they couldn't live. You, they would be much on the inside of these things. There's, there's no way. But we're not dealing with flesh and blood things here, okay? We're dealing, as the Bible says, with principalities and, and, and forces of darkness. These are not real things. And like I have said before, and I'll say this, and I made this statement before, there are things out there walking around with humanity that look human, but they are far from human. And then there are other things that, that that once were human that are long no longer human. You're dealing with inhuman forces. The Bible clear, clearly says that angels, that we are made lower than the angels, but spiritually we are higher than they are because of our relationship with God. But but physical wise we are lower than angels because of the things they can do. You're talking about being that are untold millions of years old. They watch. They learn everything. They know languages. They know science that we don't know. They know a lot. They have preternatural knowledge of the universe around us that we haven't ever t even touched. You know what I'm saying? And that's what you're dealing with. And I think there's a grand deception going on here. Okay? And I think these forces are behind that grand deception to fool us into believing that they are something else other than what they really, really are. I think you're right. I just had and to like show I said, that. And like I said earlier, mankind, and here's the bad part, mankind's in bed with these forces. We know that without a doubt. That the governments of the world have sold themselves out to this. You know, when you sell your soul, you don't, you don't sell out a bill of sale, okay? What that really means is to sell yourself out to the other side, that you're going to go with the other ones that you want to go with, and that's how you get power from these things. That's how you get become in league with these things. The Bible clearly calls this, you know, a uh, uh, familiar spirit, and that's why, and I was listening to that guy talking, that's why the Bible gives you a very strict warning, a very obvious, very strong warning, Test the spirits that you are dealing with and find out really what you're, you're facing, whether they're good or bad spirits. Uh, there are tests that you can do to find out. And one of those tests, just like what they said in that thing earlier, is the name of Jesus. To invoke the name of Jesus, the, the Son of God, the blood of Jesus, they can't stand that. They don't like that. And it usually knocks them out of the game. 
most of the time. But you got to have faith behind that, of course. You got to have faith to use it. No, you're right. You know, and I said on previous shows that allegedly that the government and governments are working with these entities, and I, that's why I wanted to show that. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. I believe that without doubt. Cause, and in the world today, I was going to say this, and we're talking about the end game now. Have you ever, at this level, seen hatred and fear that has risen in this world? Yes, no, we I haven't. Have. It's, it's, uh, I, I have. mean, it's just going, well, I mean, you know, we, I mean, but it's increasing day after day after day in this world. The fear. And the, and the hatred, and wherever you see those two elements, they're like two matches that you rub together. That's evil. That's what. That's the way evil operates. And that's what you're seeing going on in the world today, all around you, is the increase in this. And why? Why? You know, that's a very important question we must ask ourselves. Why are they increasing in their actions? Because their time is running out. Time, Chris, is running out for all of us. Uh, because like he said in that, that video, they have been with us since the beginning, and they will be with us to the end, unfortunately. But they are like parasites living off of us. Uh, that's the way they are, these fallen ones. And uh, and the Nephilim and all that ties into this. And by the way, I'm going I'm to quote something from the book of Genesis, and I want you to listen real close to what this says. And this has to do with the Nephilim. Talk a little bit about that. There were giants in the earth in those days and afterwards when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men. Now listen very close to what he said. There were giants in the earth in those days before and after that. So giants are not the offspring of Nephilim. They're part of a plan, but they're not the offspring that way of the Nephilim. Because they were already there, this race of giants that lived on this planet before the angels got with the women, okay? The fallen angels did that. So that's very obvious. So you got to knock them out of the Nephilim game in that respect. Although these giants were evil in that conception, they, were, they had already sold themselves out. To the bad forces, they eat people. They were they were awful things. They weren't good guys. Uh, so they were aligned to the nephilim, and the nephilim are the offspring, the DNA screwing up the DNA of humanity, the offspring of fallen angels and humans. The and then and the power of the nephilim still exists in this world, although most of them would have gotten wiped out by. The flood, that didn't happen because some of the remnant of them remain. I mean, Goliath, he was after the flood, right? And his brothers and all that, that was after the flood. The, so what we're looking, how did they survive? If, ever, if the Bible says all life was wiped out on the earth, except for what was on Noah's Ark, where did the Nephilim come in? The Nephilim survived through the DNA of mankind. Okay. That's that element there. And that's exactly what the end game plan was all about. And it's still ongoing today. That's why these beings, these so-called space brothers, come and, and gouge us with stuff and kidnap us and take our blood and do all this junk. It's all about the DNA. It's corrupting mankind. And that's the way they're going about it. You see. But there is, and I agree with all C.C. there is a spark of God in everyone. And that's what has kept us from going under all this time. That's where God draws the line. These are my children. You will not destroy them out of hand. You will not cross that line. And they would have done that a long time ago. They would have wiped this out eons ago. But they can't do that. It's not within their power to do it. That, 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 that safety valve is in place. God has drawn the line that even the demonic cannot cross over but they are trying to sell us a fake bill of goods here, Chris. They're trying to say, oh, we're space brothers. We have all this power. We're coming flying around in our ships, which, as you heard earlier, was not the ideal way to travel. Portals 
or wormholes. That would be the way to do it. And I believe an, the angelic hosts travel that way to, if they have to go great distances. I, that would make perfect sense to me. Uh, but I'm sure that the fallen angels utilize that as well. I don't believe those ships are coming from Alpha Centauri. I don't believe that we're dealing with bug-eyed aliens from there. We're dealing with the fallen ones, and they want us to believe. So why are they up? What are they up to then? Why do they want us to believe this so much so that they can fool us? Are they going to land one day in front of the White House and say, oh, we're your space brothers. We're here to save you. You know, take our hand and follow us to hell. Because that's what the whole plan is all about. That's going to happen, probably. I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. And when that disappearance of the rapture takes place, what are they going to say? Are they going to blame it on space aliens? You know? And say, oh, it was space aliens that did it. It wasn't God. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there, there's a devious plan at work here. This end game. And then they're still working on it, but they're getting it right exactly the way they want it. And that's the way it planned. And like I said about this woke stuff that's going on. And uh, let me say, let me make this statement. You'll like this, Chris. Okay. A racist is a person who has prejudiced against someone of an other race. Unless, of course, they disagree with a Democrat. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way that goes. Well, so you see what they're doing here, don't you? Uh, it, once upon a time in America, you and I could agree to disagree without wanting to kill each other. Okay? But that is no longer true. And that is what's happening in this world around us. This hatred, this this fear. And here's the fear. I was talking about the woke stuff, okay? I want to ask everybody that are listening tonight. When you go to speak to someone, let's say a clerk at a grocery store, and it's a woman, or do you think it's a woman? Or it's a man. Do you say, yes, ma'am, or... Thank you. Or you just kind of be ambiguous about it and say thank you and don't mention anything about sex. Well, there you go. You're being programmed. You're being programmed and it's showing up in your life slowly, a little bit. Little, that's like I said, realize, realize, realize. That's what's going on here. They're, we're buying the lie. Don't buy the lie, you know, because that's going to cost you eternal punishment. That's, that's what they're up to. That's what it's all about. And that is what the end game is. And and they're going to play that end game because they're going to draw us down to the end and drop us over that cliff if they can. That's what it's all about. And it's been going on since before the flood. But they were sneaky about the way they did it. And that's the way the demonic is. It's always underhanded and very sneaky, under the table kind of stuff. You know, it, it, they're not going to come out in the open. But now they, they, they're getting, when they're getting the upper hand, you're beginning to see this take place around you in Hollywood and places like that. They're actually admitting, yeah, I sold my soul to the devil. You know? They're, they're not trying to hide it anymore because why? Because they're getting the upper hand. That's the way evil works, by the way. When it comes to a certain point, when evil gets enough power and accumulates and gets in the position where it wants, it will overplay its hand every time. You'll know what you're dealing with if you got your eyes open to see it. You'll know what you're dealing with because they get the, they're just that way. They give themselves away. But all these, look at all these celebrities, the basketball players, the football players, the, the Hollywood celebrities, the race car drivers, the politicians and all that. They all belong, Chris, to one church. You know that? The Church of Apollyon. If you listen to them, I want you to listen to them sometimes. They're all saying the same thing over and over. It's like a mantra. It's like a robot talking. You know, it's like they've been rehearsing this stuff. And they all, they're cookie cutter, carbon copies of each other. They believe everything they're saying is true. Is they've been indoctrinated. That's what it is. And they want to indoctrinate us. And that's my big warning to everyone tonight. Don't let them do that to you. Have your own mind. Do the research like I and Chris do. Do the research. Don't take our word for it. I mean, we could be wrong, too. I mean, we're just human beings. You know, we're fallible. Don't take our word for it. Do your own research, and that will help in you open your own eyes into these things. This woke crap is another way to divide us. That's all it is. A house divided cannot stand. Satan knows this. That's why Jesus spoke about it. 
you know, they accused Jesus that day. Said, oh, you're using the power of Elzebub. You healed that man on Sunday. And Jesus said, well, wait a minute. You know, you're calling what's good and evil and evil good. This is the this is the ultimate sin, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. It's called good, evil, and evil good. He said, Jesus looked at him and said, I know who my father is, and I know who yours is, and it's not the same one. Okay? And you can't say that God heals people in the wrong way. You can't say that God moves in the wrong way, because that's a lie. That's the lie that the devil wants you to believe. He doesn't do that. He moves in the correct way. Well, I'll say this about that crazy witch. They all go home at the end of the day on the same bus, most of them. They're all politicians, okay? And I put I put politicians below used car salesmen. <laughs> That's where I put them. <laughs> yeah, because I they're all about the power, the money, the prestige. That's what it's all about. Did you know, I'm going to tell you this, something to blow your mind, Chris. When they first set Congress in the Senate up, here was the deal. You serve one cent, one term. You don't get paid anything for it. You serve one term and then you go home. What happened with that? Well, a little bit over time, they voted their self in so they can just be in it as long as they want and make all the money they want. Uh, look at some of the unscrupulous politicians on both sides of the aisle who play the stock market with insider information. That's not fair. That's not right. That's wrong. But they do it for the money. That's what it's all about with these guys. That's a politician for you. That's what Mark Twain said. He thought about going into politics today if it wasn't for one day, you know, if it wasn't for the politicians. <laughs> That's what you got to deal with. I believe they all go home on the same bus at the end of the day, so to speak, you know. Uh, that's what it comes down to. We don't trust. Don't put your trust in politicians. I know we have to vote and we try to get the right person in and, and all that. That's that's OK. You know, that's what we're you know, that's the only little power that we have left. Some people in some countries don't have that. And that's why I still love America. You know, but the whole thing is. Be careful who you're voting for. It's very important. You know, that they line up with what you want. You know, you want to get accomplished. Because these guys will do anything, like certain people whose name begins with a no. They come out of nowhere with plenty of money. People backing him up, become president for no reason, you know. And that way, you got to wonder what's going on here. The bad guys know how to put take care of their own. Okay, I hate to say that, but the, that's like that old saying: the devil takes care of his own, and he certainly does, uh, because he's got a job for him to do. Okay, that's what it's all about. And that's the end game. And like I say, they all belong to that church, the Apollyon Church. And here's what it's coming down to. A one world government and a one world religion. Because they're both going to go together to steal your soul. Okay, they're both going to get together to, to, to steal whatever good future you could have had. Your relationship with your creator, your, your well-being and your health, everything hinges and these two, these two are going to get together, and everybody's going. Here's 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 the one world religion. Chris. Listen to this, river. Oh, there's something good with all religions. All religions. I believe all religions are right. I believe everything. Come on, people. That's exactly what these forces want. They want you to believe everything. That way, you fall over the truth and never see it. That's all it's all about. To lead you away from that truth. And they say, and all religion, come on, all religions are not right in this world. Now, I hate to say that, but it's just true. All religions are not right. The church is not going to save you, people. That's not that's not what it's there for. It's just to kind of guide you to have your sort of sort of relationship with God. But unfortunately it falls very flat in many aspects many ways when it does that because it's a man-made thing you've got to understand that do not put your eyes on men form your relationship with your creator he is not going to set you wrong he's not going to lie to you he doesn't want another term in congress okay that's not what it's about he is loves you with an unconditional all-encompassing merciful love the good guy, the good guys do that, but the bad guy don't. Okay, um, you know what? Paul said something very interesting. He said, "If an angel 
come down out of heaven having another gospel. Don't believe it. Don't take that angel. Well, it's probably not a good angel, by the way. Um, definitely, if he's got another gospel, he's definitely not on the right team. All right, let's get on the right team, people. We've got to understand what's coming down in this world and where it's going and what these things are up to. And this end game is playing out right in front of our eyes. And when they get this one world government and this one world religion started, and they're going to say, oh, we're all brothers. Now, listen to me just a minute. We are all brothers and sisters. Okay, we are. I'm not disagreeing with that. But it's the way they're going about this. They're, lead, they're, they're not doing it in a godly way. They're not doing it in the right way. It's hypocritical. Listen to them. They are hypocrites. They are some of the worst hypocrites that have ever walked this earth because they are in league with devils and demons. And what they are telling you is not the truth. You've got to be very careful. I know we're all brothers and sisters, and we should all love each other, but they're going about it the absolute 110% backward way at it. They're not going the right way through your creator. That love has to be shared and fostered through your creator and your relationship with your creator. Not what some group of guys tell you. That, oh, we're all brothers. We're going to love each other. And we're going to accept all religions. No matter what we do, we're going to love each other. Oh, wait a minute. That's anti-Bible teaching right there. That's, that's anti-Christ type of stuff. Okay? Be very careful. Because don't buy that lie. That's what they were there. That's what they're up to. I see these flags around town. It's got all the, the symbols of all the religions. Oh, we're all one brother. Don't buy this crap, people. That's not what they're doing, okay? They are up to some very nefarious purposes. That's what I said last show. Open your spiritual eyes. I like that. My protons are, I told you so. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, and, and, but I'm saying people are shopping and thinking, Chris. They say, oh, what do I call this person? He, she, it, it. What, what's going on with us? What's happening to us? We're falling victims to this bunch of stuff. There's nothing but censorship. It's nothing but indoctrination. And they're not, and here's the bad part. It's really what sticks in my curl. It's really the burr under my saddle is they're coming after your children. The poor, innocent little children, they don't know, they're going after them. Why? Because Satan loves to corrupt the innocent. Oh, that's, that's icing on the cake for him. And they're coming after your children. They're coming after you. They're already after you, but they're coming after your children. And if you really love your children, if you really care for them, your children, your grandchildren, whatever the case may be, you need to start thinking about doing something about this. Because they have a plan straight from hell, and that's the end game. What do you think about that, Chris? No other way to put it. No other way to top it. No other way to dice it, slice it. Uh -huh. It is what it is. You know, now you told Thank me you 20 know. years ago that we we're going to be in this position, this predicament. I wouldn't have believed you. You know, I sent you that other video earlier today. It, it kind of rocked my world. You know, things are happening behind our backs, oh. underneath grounds, with governments. Portals are being opened, allegedly. So, well, I'm going to tell you something, Chris. Chris. I, believe, I believe without a doubt that our government and the governments of the world have made a demonic contract. And I believe they found out that they're on the shorty end of that stick because that's the way it always works with the demonic. The devil's always going to come out on top. He's like the, the house casino. He's always going to win if he can. He's not going to let you win for sure. He's going to use you. And I think... They, they. Uh, I think you agree with me. They've made a contract. They've, they've signed in blood or whatever the case. They've sold out to the darkness. There's too much evidence says otherwise. Uh -huh. I mean, people are not going to come forward in making this stuff up. Uh -huh. 
There's not going to be paper trails stating this. There's not going to be photographs and government documentation. Well, no. They're going to hide that well. Trust me. That's the way they operate. You, like may, you, said, uh, you, may, you may get clues, you know, and that's why we, we train as investigators, you know, you're an investigator, Chris, I am too. We're trained as investigators to look for those clues, to, to, to eye those patterns. We can see them. We can see that there. Although we may not have the evidence we want, we'd like to have some real documentation and say, look, folks, this is it. And, but even people's not going to believe us in. Here's the bad thing, Chris. People are going to believe what they want to believe, whether they're confronted with the truth or not. And so that's why I tell them, please try to open your eyes and see things for what they really are. And like we said at the beginning of this program, they want to twist our reality to the point we won't even know what's real anymore. Okay? And then we doubt our own selves. And we doubt our eyes and our, and our brains are telling us things. They want us to doubt, to doubt that. That destroys true faith, by the way. And they are enemies of faith and truth. We must remember that. They are eternal enemies of faith and truth. They are their people. I've seen them. I know they're real. I'm not making this up. I'm not, I'm not here. I'm not getting any money for this. I'm not making lives up to, to, to bring home a paycheck on that, although a lot of those guys out there are doing that. That's not what Chris and I are doing here. No. No. We're trying to get the message across. We're trying to get you to open your eyes to see what's real, what the real reality is. Like I said, the real lies, real lies, real lies. And that's what we're dealing with here. Well, I tell you what, next week's going to be very interesting, isn't it? Yep. What are we going to do next uh, week? (laughs) Everybody out there listening tonight, come back next week and hit us with all the questions you want because we're ready. (laughs) Yeah, we're going to put you on live. We're going to put you on live. We're going to have a telephone line where you can call in, ask your questions away, and we will do what we can to answer them. So, yes. That's an awful lot of clickbait out there, so I'll try to stop skeptical and everything. Always, you know what, crazy witch? We all make our own decisions in life. You know, it, you know it, it, what's really crazy is I reach into one of my drawers, and you got to be careful how you say drawers. And I had to do this to appease people. And it says right there, Universal Life of Church Ministry. I had to put universal on there instead of what I wanted to because of That's people's the way they operate. feelings. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The way they operate. I couldn't put what I wanted. Uh-huh. But I had to be universal, so that's what I am. But I know what my faith is. I know what I believe in. So That's the main thing. Thank Chris. you. Know where you stand. Really stand. Yes, I know. I know where I stand. But yeah, so another I. interesting show, ladies and gentlemen. But next week, it's gonna be bring it. Bring it's it. okay. It's, it's okay to be skeptical about things. That's true. You know, you need to have a skeptical eye. But there comes a point where you've got to say, well, this is what I found out to be the truth, and that's what I got to go with. You can't just keep going on and on questioning things without finding the truth. That's what you're looking for. As investigators, we are looking for that one thing. What is it? It starts with a T. The truth. truth. Yep. But you know what, though, is, is a lot of people don't know the truth because they think they want to believe in what they think they want to believe is Exactly. The truth. Yeah. Well, that yeah, is that, exactly that's why the Word said. of God says they will believe a lie and be damned. And that's why I said and don't buy, said. Don't buy the lie. Said, Please it, don't do that. Yeah. All these civilizations has the same type of religion but different ways. They all have the same flood. They all have the same plagues. Now, how is that possible? I don't know how that's possible. Biblical reference. The only thing I said. 
But yes, know, Raven Creek. I'll say this, Chris. We are all brothers and sisters of mankind, humankind, whatever that you want to put on it. Uh, the thought police are always working, and the language police are always watching us. Uh, but we need to ignore that. You know, we need to live. We need to live our lives in the truth. You know, that's what we need to be striving for. Live our lives in the truth and be enemies to the lies. You know. Right. Well, I'll let you end this in prayers. We need it tonight. And it was awful thick again. We'll say a little prayer right quick. Yeah. Okay. Heavenly Father, we ask you tonight to look down upon us, your children. You created us out of your eternal love. You will uphold us if we only ask, if we will only reach out and take your hand. You will lead us, you will guide us, you will guard us in the ways that we must go. Open our minds and our hearts and our spirits to the truth that, that you are, that you are the absolute truth of this universe. Open our eyes and our hearts and our minds, our intellect to this. Open our lives to let you in, to dwell within us so that we may live in truth and in goodness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we humbly pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, next week, we're taking your calls on the air and on the phone. Be prepared. Yep. I'm excited. Oh, yeah, it's going to be good. So I did, I I did talk to an Indian tonight. I do, yeah. too. It's interesting where they come from. Yeah, Raven I always, Creek, you're uh, absolutely welcome. Thank whenever you. I did lectures, Chris, I'd always open up at the end for the questions. That's the thing I look forward to. It, you know, it's it's interesting everybody's beliefs and in their theories and stuff. Which, you know, it's it's fine. I, I'm okay with that. But reality, you know. It's not what it is. It's not what they want you so, to think it is. But that's the thing. Yeah. Powers that be are the powers that be, okay? And they want you to think different things. That's why I said, mentioned earlier, that's what we're living like 1984. It's all police and language police. You know, uh, well, how did we get to that? You know, how did we get here? Uh, that's the bad thing. Right. Yeah, have a good well, night. Coast to coast and around the world. And you all too. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. You all have a good night. Thank God you. bless everybody. Take care. We'll Take see care. ya. And of course, I'm trying to hit a button, by the way. Yeah, it's a little bit slow. <laughs> It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, ship, should we run? <laughs> no. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, shit. should we run? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a grizzly. Are you sure it's not Jim Monk? <laughs> Thank you.
No, ah, I'm out of here. <laughs> it's a grizzly. Oh, money here. Huh? Maybe it is a chipmunk. It's a grizzly. Oh, f it. Are we gonna die? I don't know. We're just gonna sit here and listen and watch. Let's get out of here, maybe. <laughs> Fall! <laughs>